Right, we've got a special guest on our coffee chat. We have got the gorgeous Stephanie. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm hanging out with Bryce and uh, we're just discussing. Uh, I ended up getting sick while I'm here, so I apologize if I do cough a lot. I'm going to try not to. I got my cranberry juice. Otherwise, I'm doing great. It's so soon as I think about, because with this whole ridiculous pandemic, you know, you go into the supermarket without a muzzle. And of course, because you're so conscious that you mustn't cough or sneeze, that's all you do is just because it's good as you <laughs> on it. Her son said something really funny the other day. And of course, this is coming from a 15 year old boy, which made it even more funnier. He, he was like, you know, it used to be that people would cough to hide a fart. Now they fart to hide a cough. <laughs> Did he really say that? I didn't he hear said that. that to me at Starbucks. I didn't hear that. That's hilarious. That's something he would say. <laughs> I was like, Tyler, you're so funny. He's, he's very comical, Catherine. <laughs> that is absolutely hysterical. So we've been, we've all had an interesting few weeks, haven't we? You girls have had such fun having time together. And I've loved seeing your stuff on your Twitter and your Instagram and your videos and things. And I know there's lots lots more coming so nice for you guys to have connected together but also we've had some interesting experiences haven't we with our channels and social media and things like that it's been quite a thought-provoking time that's the nice way to put it Catherine <laughs> a very nice oh, way to put it. I'm gonna get ruder as the show goes on <laughs> We're starting off nice. <laughs> we'll start off nice and then we get fiery. It's so funny. We actually filmed this. As we're filming this, it's 10 o'clock in the morning here on the <laughs> East Coast. But Stephanie and I got up and filmed an episode together and I've just been editing it. And we addressed it too because we're kind of going through the same thing. And um, and Catherine as well is is that, uh, and, and I want to say this again, 99.9% .9 of the people who watch our shows are the most delightful, amazing, beautiful people. I have the privilege of, of getting to know in this journey. And I'm still just so freaking grateful that somebody <clears throat> besides my mom is watching my, my channel. You know, it still just shocks me that people actually want to watch me. So I'm very humbled by that. And I love 99.9% .9 of our subscribers and we share all of us share people. We're all a community, right? We're all just one big community. And as Catherine, as we were saying, like one thing that's different though, between us and the people that watch us, and I think most of the people that watch us understand this, is that we're going through our learning and, uh, and awakening on a public platform. You know, whereas people watching us, and that's our choice. We did that to ourselves. We put ourselves up there. I was under this idea that I could put my research out and then I could get feedback and we could all grow together and we could all help each other out and figure out the truth together. Um, I never, I never fully understood that there was going to be such wild other things happening too, you know, conspiracy theories about us, you know, when literally I'm in my bedroom, aren't I? Uh, yeah. This is a regular apartment bedroom. Yeah. My bed's right there. Like there's no studio here. It's just me. I'm filming on a MacBook. Nothing special. I have a ring light. It's really funny because I've been able to see a couple people like I have uh, someone in one of my groups that I have. She lives actually quite close to me, like literally an hour away. Um, me and a friend who connected with her were able to go pick her up and bring her um, to visit us um, with her grandchild. And you see where their background is, and it's completely different than what you're viewing on screen. Same thing goes for Bryce. Same thing goes for me. If you guys saw my studio, it's nothing special, believe me. And this is just an ordinary bedroom. Yep. It's not even a large bedroom. It's just a regular old size bedroom with a fake curtain. Yeah. And lovely. When I got a book is, moon stuff. And I'll tell you, I set this up because I have had some issues um, when I used to fill, film up in the front where people actually figured out where I lived. Mm. And, and that got kind of scary. There were a couple of scary incidents that happened. And so I had to move myself into a more obscure area of my house just to kind of protect protect me and but yeah it's wild the conspiracy theories that people have about us um i know Catherine. Uh, something happened last night where i had to address it on youtube and I, i've had to address it before by disabling my comments um because i obviously this research i do into religion and I, yes my focus is christianity because that's the religion i was born into that's the one i know the best that's the one that, that affected my life the most and I have said, a hand to God, the meanest people I've ever come across have been the Christians. Not all of them, 
but generally speaking. And I know I wrote a, made a post on YouTube last night on my community tab. My job is not to coddle you. Yeah. And this is something I wanted to raise as well, because, we, you know, we started our channels, different interests, different things, but it's quite a small circuit that have come together because a lot of what I've been doing over the last year is looking at community and the importance of what building community. And we're all finding our new communities because a lot of us have realized that we're not vibrationally matched to our old ones. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. That's part of the learning curve. But equally, our job, my job, <coughs> is not to prove anything to you. It's not to coerce you. It's not to try and convince you of anything. It's not my job to quote loads of references. We covered this with our lovely chat with Dr. Christian Northrop yesterday. You know, you, you've you been doing your research for years. I've been doing mine for years. Dr. Christian has been doing hers for even longer. And we've all built up this huge amount of knowledge in areas that interest us. And if we're if for every show, we're meant to quote every reference and every source of every bit of information we're talking about, it would be one, the most boring show ever. And two, part of what people bring as individuals to the table is to bring that life experience, bring the research, merge it together and have a discussion. But trust me, I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything. And when Bryce and I talk to people, we're going to be, if we invite someone on our shows, we respect them and yeah. we are going to treat them with common decency and respect and ask their opinions and listen to their opinions. And that is how we all learn. It doesn't mean we all have to agree with them. It doesn't mean that they, just by them agreeing to come on our shows, they don't agree with everything we say and everything we 100%. think. I mean, it, I loved our the conversation with Ishmael Perez, and I agree with like 99% of the things he says, but there are some things that I don't actually agree with, but I respect the hell out of him, and I exactly. really like him, and I can't wait to film with him again because I really respect him, and I don't care that there are some different things, because most of what we, most of what I agree with, you know, it's, and, and I just, we say, Catherine, I feel like we beat a dead horse sometimes because it's like, we, we say this all the time, why yeah. have we gotten to this place in our, in our timeline <laughs> in our world, even on our side, the truther side, where we have to agree with everything everyone says, it's ridiculous. I'm you sure- You cannot learn like that. You just no. can't learn. <laughs> I mean, I've changed my opinion on so many things throughout the course of my life. And like we say all the time, when you know better, you do better. So there's, there's food choices I've made, there's behaviors I've made, there's opinions about people. There's loads of people that I watched that I now have a very different opinion on than I did when I didn't know them as well. And that's fine, but it's my opinion. It doesn't make it right. There's different interactions. There's reasons. We talk a lot about why there's reasons why people come into your life at certain times and then move on from certain times. And that's a two way thing because the resonance is no longer there. And to keep falsely doing that because other people want it, is just not it's just not serving anyone it's just being very incongruent with yourself and not following what's right and how are you ever going to learn we make our best you know learning from mistakes often yeah, yeah. and i've really yeah i have been triggered because i'm just like jesus what is the mentality of the people that are sitting there looking to bring people down looking to criticize looking to um project their own things on them I and mean, i've had a lot of comments recently like i start doing my hair differently now i'm on my hair i've got my hair curled for bryce and stephanie you know and then people are like oh she's obviously attracted to him oh she's obviously it's like, i'll grow up i'm not at school anymore you know it's it's i know it's just petty but i think it needs saying because People have got to be honest with themselves and saying, why are they listening to something? Why are they reading a certain book? Why are they interacting with a certain group of people? Are you interacting to make a positive contribution or are you just taking your own unhappiness out on other people? And when I saw what you two have both been through recently again with sharing your research on the Christians, I, you know, a normal person... If they know, you're very well known for the research you do, both of you. Why would you listen to that? I, it, I, I said it in my post. I'm not why forcing you? you. I'm not going on to Christian YouTube channels and commenting. I just don't watch them. 
because I believe it's all bullshit that they're telling me. And I said this this morning, a year ago, I have left, I have not taken, taken any videos off of my platform. If there are videos that have been removed from my platform, it's the platform that removed them, not me, because right. I am yeah. not ashamed to say that my opinion has changed. This time last year, I thought we were at the apocalypse, but then yeah. all of a sudden I started to read somebody, somebody said to me first, they said, Hey, have you seen this map of America, the real map of America? No, I haven't. Let me look at this. I put it to the side for a minute because I wasn't sure <laughs> if that was real or how I felt. So I just left it to the side with no opinion. Then I started researching Tartaria and then all of a sudden the floodgates open and my, and my opinion had to change, not for emotional reasons, but because the facts presented themselves in a different way. And so I've shared that on my channel. Now I have not, with that being said, I have not taken down. No, I have taken no videos down. Any videos that have come down, have come down by the platform. You can go back and watch my videos from a year ago where I was saying something different because I'm not ashamed of the fact, like I said, I'm going through this great awakening on a public platform, but I'm awakening with everybody else. I'm sure everybody watching right now has had a change of opinion about things during these, not even the course of your life, just these two years. Because we've been in hydrotype mean, these two my years. My biggest one is on guns, because from the UK, we have been <laughs> absolutely brainwashed that all Americans are completely mad to have guns because we believed that the mass, I can't say it on here, were real. Yeah. And that's what all we've been taught. That's all I've ever been taught. And then I heard an interview two and a half years ago on London Real where someone was explaining why it's so important. And I had also been following Ollie Damagal for quite a long while, who's done um, the more research than anyone I know into the false flappy things. Mm -hmm. You all know what I'm talking about. Yep. And suddenly this penny dropped and I was like, oh my God, I completely fell for it. I completely fell for the propaganda that I as a British person have been fed since they go about why. And now, of course, I'm looking at all the news about the false flappy things and the mass bang, bang, bang things in a completely different eyes. And when you see through that veil, so we've all everything there's so many things in my life where I've just thought oh my goodness I fell for that now I have and there will be more there will be a lot more there'll be more every week you know there's some people that I feel closer to and other people where mutually we just don't resonate anymore you know they're feeling the same about me they're allowed to step away from me as much as I'm allowed to step away from them and a lot of the time there's no drama involved at no. all no yeah. drama it might even be as simple as interest have shifted and things and the reason we're having this conversation today is not to have a moan. We are, as Bryce said, we're so grateful that we've got this opportunity because I have learned so much about myself, about the world, about tolerance for other people, about other people's opinions. I, the knowledge I've learned over the last two years about world events, about what's really going on in the world, about things have have just made me into a completely different person. And I would quite frankly say a much better person because I was very blinkered in certain areas before because I had no exposure to them at all. But, you know, it's just because of the fact that we all talk about we want things to happen a lot quicker. We talk about this new world we all want to create. We talk about the communities we want to be part of. But if we're not behaving in that way, we're never going to create it. Yeah. Now, we're very happy. We, we pick each other up the whole time, you know, in terms of things. I, I, you know, good grief. Far from perfect. I'm just saying if we, it comes back to what we're putting out there and how we're conducting ourselves. And if we're looking to be offended, if we're looking to criticize, if we're looking to pull each other down, then that's what we're going to get in our own life and period. What I want to say too, also, you know, with the whole like, conspiracy people make about us i know i've had i had someone accuse me of being a government asset which is laughable i mean i don't even know how to boil an egg like I, the government doesn't want me to be their asset trust me you know um <laughs> i can't i i like uh, no you know so um because i had done shows with particular other truthers that this person perceives as being bad whether they're bad or not is beside the point Catherine and i stephanie and i all of us when anybody can start a YouTube channel, there's mm. not some contract that's given to you. And all of a sudden you're hired to do this. You just start a YouTube channel and you just start working and presenting. And sometimes your channel grows. Sometimes it doesn't. David Zublik, I started going on his show. That's the reason why my platform got big. If it wasn't Price for David, me, 
If it wasn't for David Zublick, I don't know if my platform would be big at all. <laughs> and I've been very honest about that. With that being said, we, we know that there are a lot of ba bad truthers out there. We understand that, but we don't know who they are. We've had to, we know who some of them are because we've learned through an experience with them. Just like you guys watching are learning through your experiences. As I said in the beginning, the only difference between us and the people watching right now is that we chose, we put ourselves out publicly to go through this metamorphosis. And so, yes, there are going to be times that perhaps we did film with somebody who was bad, but we didn't know it at the time. Yeah, exactly. And then the minute I find out that that person, and I really believe that from what I've been presented, that this person is bad. I will not film with them anymore. I'm not going to say on my camera who it is because that's not really my job. That's not my, because a lot of this for Catherine and me, we've had some similar experiences. Stephanie's had some experiences. It's just stuff that's very personal that woke us up. And that's not appropriate to be putting out on to, you slamming someone's name on a public platform. You have a gut intuition as well, just like we do. Right. Does that make so, sense? You can't judge yeah. us. You can't say, because we are learning just like you are learning. Nobody hands you a list and says, by the way, these are the bad truthers. That doesn't happen that way, guys. We have to learn ourselves through our own trial and error, you know, and, and right. It's a reflection, isn't it, ladies, about what's going on at the global scale. So a lot of the people that have fooled us on celebrities, politicians, not that anyone's ever liked a politician, I don't think, but you know what I mean. And, and the thing is also, this is why we've gone back, and I love our discussions with Jamie on the Fifth Agreement, uh, you know, here, because this basic stuff is like my view of the world is filtered through me and my experiences. So if I'm not resonating, for, say, with a certain person, Steph might love them and might be a really good match for them at the moment. And we're both right. Yeah, we're both right. So the thing is, it's like when when we're making decisions and a lot of the time it's just different interests. So I started off with very different interests at the start of all this because I was on such a steep learning curve. And now I've moved into at the moment I'm at a stage where I'm really solution focused and I'm really into community and providing health solutions to people and motivations. And come on, guys, we can do this together. And, you know, put in those daily habits that you want to do. That's where I'm at at the moment. Who knows where I'll be at next week? I don't know. <laughs> no one else knows. But we're all changing at different times. So a lot of the time there's that natural evolution. And similarly with you guys who are watching, there'll be a natural in in evolution. So like this morning, I've had a catalogue of disasters. The builders are doing our kitchen and something collapsed and there was water everywhere and everything. So when I've had that sort of morning... I'm going to respond differently to things where I've just been out on a lovely walk with my dog and you'll all be the same. So a lot of the time it's what's in us that's causing that response, not necessarily who you're listening to, whether yeah. it's or one of our guests. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it is, it is funny because I know you've said, tell me all the time you send me comments of people that have this whole story around you about your, your, uh, your lifestyle and, all these boyfriends you have because you look different in one shot from the next. And you're like, I, you, you're like, I literally just went out and took the horses out. My hair got a little wind blown because I was feeding the horses, you uh -huh. know? And it's, and if people, people know that's what you do. So if you think logically, you're like, Oh, maybe she was just out with the horses, you uh, different colored lipstick. Uh, what lady watching out right now doesn't have different colored lipsticks. That exactly. You put on every day or, or you, you know, it, it's, it's, and like I said, I just want to, again, reiterate that 99.9% .9 of the people who watch us are fantastic. And we're not talking about, you can laugh along with us when it comes to the, these ridiculous comments. And, um, you know, for me, I, and I said this in my post, it's gotten dangerous for me at times because mm -hmm. I have, ha I've had a literal hit put on me. I, I have had that. I had that happen in November and I had to deal with that off camera. And it was one of the scariest things I've ever dealt with in my life. Um, but beyond that, I still get, um, threats through emails from Christians that want to remove me from this world simply for presenting research simply for presenting research and it says a lot about their programming too mm -hmm. um and i've had to turn some of those emails some of the real serious ones over to law enforcement and that should not be happening that should not be happening that's and not okay 
you know, we've all sat here and we've all come, you know, so many people have realised that a lot of what they've been taught about health is not right. A lot of what things their doctors have told them is not right. A lot of uh, most of the education system that they've been through is not right. So when someone presents something that's different, um, different points of view, you know, they, we've had some really interesting guests that are just get really way out stuff. And, and oh, the other thing I want to address about people just suddenly bursting onto the scene. Now, we've all heard this. Now, yeah. three years ago, had you heard of any of us? Whoever you might be watching, had you heard of any of us? If you look back at, say, let's take Ishmael for an example. He's got videos on YouTube from three years ago. It's just no one was interested then. Yeah. So it's like when you get these pop stars or actresses and they say you've got sudden fame and they're like, I've been at this for 15 years. It's just now someone's watched one of my films. Now, some of us haven't. Some of us have literally are new to this for the last couple of years. Before two years ago, you'd have seen loads of um, animal health videos that I had for my students that I put on YouTube because it was easier for them to see and things. They're all gone now because my first channel got deleted with no fault of mine. Well, it was my fault because I was talking about things that I didn't realise I shouldn't be. But I meant no fault of mine. I didn't take the videos off. They yeah. did. Because if not, you'd see that before this, I had loads of videos on animal health and things on there. Um, not because I wanted to be on YouTube, just because it was the easiest way to share things with clients and customers. Um, so a lot of people, these assumptions are just not right about, you know, who suddenly burst onto the scene, who hasn't. Most of the people that the people watching our shows watch are very new to YouTube over the last couple of years. Most oh, of them yeah. are. Well, and as I said, like for my story in particular, before all this happened, when I was a Mysore teacher, I never, if you had told me five years ago that I would have a platform on YouTube, I would have laughed at you. Same. Like, I, never, I thought I was, and I have, I have a pretty good name in the, well, I did now that I have a YouTube channel. I don't think my name's that great anymore in the Ashtanga world because I'm one of those crazy people. But, um, you know, I already had in my little community of my work, I was already kind of, I'm the only female authorized in the state of Georgia. I run a nonprofit out of India to help. I, I already kind of had my, my life set. And so when YouTube, when my sh shawl went down because of the lockdown, a whole new door opened for me and my channel, you know, it was, I had under a thousand subscribers for a really long time. And it mm -hmm. wasn't until I went on Zublix platform that my channel started to grow. And so, yeah, you can't just assume that someone popped up out of nowhere. There's always a story. There's always yeah. a story. I mean, our friend, Charlie Ward, I subscribed to Charlie Ward when he had like 33, 35 subscribers or something like that. Exactly. exactly. And now look at him. And he was literally taking walks with his iPhone. And I was like, I like this man seems kind of jolly. I like. I'm gonna. I I'm started gonna... off with an iPhone. Yeah. I didn't even have a computer at first. It, it, everything was on my iPhone. Everything. Yeah. And I didn't even know my head from my ass when it came to technology or a YouTube channel. And I, I mean, I came out of the blue in the last. I think I started nine months ago, and I was given one task. You're gonna laugh at this. One task by God to connect with Bryce Watson. That was it. <laughs> I had to start a channel and I had to connect with her and I didn't know why. And I put it off for four months, four months. I procrastinated and I did not know why I had no clue where it was going to go. And I'm like, I don't really want to put my face out on screen. Like it was the scariest thing yeah. for me to put a channel up, like really scary. I'm a girl who's just living a simple life. I came out of the medical world. Now I know why I had to connect with Bryce. Now I definitely know why there's a lot more to it, but Yeah. I was given specific tasks from my higher self, what I needed to do. And there was a major reason behind all of it. And in the meantime, the other thing I wanted to do was provide encouragement during this period of being in limbo. Mm. Because a lot of what I provide, you know, for viewers is obviously I do the tarot and the Oracle cards and stuff like that. But I also want to be a beacon of light of encouragement. And if people don't resonate with that, that's completely fine. But don't post, a, you know, nonsense on the comments that are narcissistic. Yeah, to tell us that we're going to hell <laughs> because you don't agree with us is one of the most narcissistic, psychotic things a person can do. You don't know where you don't know our soul contract and it's none of your business. Um, yeah. And that's, and that it's funny though, because I made it my mission when David Zublik helps me grow my platform. I made it my mission. To help others grow their platform too. Same here. 
Mm. When we say we're all just what when I say quote Ram Dass, we're all just walking each other home. I mean it. Yeah. We're and all together. Thing. And also we've all stepped away from such people. I mean, there's loads of people that I used to listen to, you know, Deepak Chopra to name just a few that I don't listen to anymore for very good reason. Um, but at the time, 10 years ago, I used to listen to him a lot. Yeah. And now I'm a different person. And I think probably he's a different person, just as an example. I don't know, though, because I've never met the man. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that I think what I would, what I'm loving is the fact that everyone's going through this. And I completely get that everyone's going to have different emotions that based on what's happened to them that day, what they're going through in general, what their surroundings are, how in, how much are you supported? So the thing that I've really realised over this last sort of couple of years is there's a lot of people that do not have support around them. Yeah. They do not have friends and family that are there to lift them up and be supportive of them. And I get that that is so, so hard. And we've all been through that as well. So what we've done is we've, and we are still doing and will continue to do, is finding a new community. And that involves everyone who's listening. It's like we've said before, no one is more important or least important in this. <laughs> Every contribution is, is so, so important. And I would just think, you know, what I've tried to do over the last sort of two years is just stop that instant reaction and just sort of think, you know, is this my issue or is it them? Is it kind? Is it helpful? How do I feel if I do this? Because, for example, to try and shame someone because they're perceivably friends with someone that you've never met, that you've made a judgment about and you've decided is bad, but you don't know them. You haven't even met them and you don't know what our relationship is with them. Just like I don't know what your relationship. If someone doesn't like a certain me or a certain guest, that is completely your prerogative. But it's not your prerogative to try and inflict your view on other people. Right. Because you, know? you don't know what my relationship is with that person at all. Right. You're just guessing. And that's what, um, you know, that's, we even said this this morning, like I, I, I'm, I've had to disable comments on a lot of videos because of the harassment. And, and I don't mind if people in a very polite way, bring up <laughs> a different opinion, but when the name calling starts, when the threat starts uh, against me, against a guest, against another subscriber, that's when it's, that's when I'll block you because that's crossing a line. And, um, and it, it's, we just have to, it's just, I know we've, we've, I think we've spoken about this before. Black and white thinking is considered a mental disorder. Yeah. There's always shades of gray. Yeah. Always, always. And I, I feel like with other people we film with Catherine that people have said, oh, that person's bad. As I said, if I believe that somebody is bad, if something happens where I all of a sudden feel like this person is not good, I will stop filming with that person. Exactly. Other than that, other people that people accuse of being bad, I've had nothing but a beautiful experiences with. with. <laughs> there are people we film with that other people say are bad, and I've had, they've been nothing but kind to me. They've been nothing exactly. but kind. And so I'm going to, until there's evidence or until I see something that is concerning to me, I will continue to give them the benefit of the doubt because I feel like that's what a good human does. It's just like, like our friend, Jamie, we've spoken about the Olympian to like, we, there are people out there that say, oh, all athletes, all of them are doing the, <coughs> the party drug. But then we have Jamie saying as a gold medalist Olympic, I knew nothing about it until the great awakening. So how is it fair yeah. for us to start judging people so harshly when we know nothing about, about their lives? It's like I, people get mad at me because sometimes I'll post music that I'm listening to on Twitter because I love music. And yes, I am aware that some of these bads are, some of these bands are allegedly bad. However, my memories with these songs are good yeah. because I was with my friends because mm -hmm. I was, la I was at a concert with friends. It's, I have good memories around them. It's impossible to take everything out that is, you know, part of the controllers. It's exactly. Impossible. It's impossible. At this point, we really have to redo and reshape our earth first. And when you said, and sorry, did I interrupt you? No, you're good. Okay. Yeah. Like the whole community type of thing you were talking about, Catherine, like I developed uh, those groups that I was doing for the community because I, I knew people were coming out of the church that really needed 
um, to find their way or just needed support because they had no family, friends, like they were deemed crazy. And what it started as, like, it started as like these really nice, small groups, very nice people, which most of the original people are still in these groups. And I've handed them off to other leadership because I couldn't, with all the work that I'm doing now, I just couldn't handle all of them. But then I started getting a lot of new people and it started becoming a gossip fest about who's bad and who's not. And so I actually have not added anybody in about two months because um, I'm not doing that anymore. I had to put a cap on it. I, I had to put a boundary on it because I like that energy was sucking every, all the energy out of me. And then I had to be very careful what I say. And it, it was like this big, it's just a, they want to join group for gossip. It's essentially what it was. And I'm not, I couldn't do that anymore. Yeah. He here. And I, mean, <laughs> I, you know, I, I found myself getting back into gossip mode before, you know, none of us are perfect. I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but what I do was I catch it really quickly and I recognize it and I correct it. And, and that's really, really important because equally I've had lots of people that I think <coughs> were really great and had forfeit. And I've subsequently found out from personal experience otherwise, but I'm not going to share that with anyone on here because again, it's my personal experience with them and you might have a different experience with them or we all need different people with different skills in our lives at different times. And I think, you know, we, we're so, so, so close. I I've honestly have never felt more positive in my life about where we're at. I have, I've never, ever felt more positive. Same. We're so close. I don't want us to fuck it up now. No. <laughs> humanity, you know, we as humanity... The fact that we need nutritionists is ridiculous. No animal in the wild needs a nutritionist to tell it what to eat. They instinctively know and it's passed on. The fact that we've moved away from communities, everyone needs a strong community that accepts them no matter what. And what I want us to all do is embrace all our differences, embrace all our quirks. So long as people have got a good heart and are contributing, we want differences. We want to be different that's the point and and i just think god humanity don't fuck it up now we've we've got back in we've we've learned a lot of lessons let's keep learning them yes just be be like as as we if you are someone that's triggered i just would ask you to put yourself into the person's shoes that you're attacking how would you feel? Show empathy. Show empathy. How, even if you disagree with that person, how would you feel if someone said those things to you? How would you feel if someone created a whole telenovela around your life that could damage your actual relationships in your life because they're not true? You know, don't speak something unless you know for a fact it's true. Give people the benefit of the doubt and understand that, again, every single person on YouTube is going through this awakening publicly. So if you sit back and look at your own life, have there been times where you have misjudged a person, where you thought one way and then changed your mind to another <laughs> opinion? That's all we're doing. We're just doing it on a public platform. We're all very similar that way. And again, I want to thank, I, I feel bad for our viewers that are awesome. Yeah. I really want to thank you guys because I, I've said this before, like I'm still just shocked that someone besides my mother is watching my YouTube channel. Like I'm just still so like, you guys humble me um, with, by by watching this and and 99.9% .9 of you, I consider you guys my friends. Like some of you, I don't even know what you look like, but I just see your your handle name. And I'm like, oh yeah, there they, I consider you my friend, you know? And, and I mean that. And I, and I can't wait to meet everybody one day because I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, all of my subscribers, all of, we all share subscribers. You guys are a part of Esoteric Atlanta as well, as well as we wouldn't have oh, our platforms if it wasn't for you. We wouldn't have our platforms. And that energy sharing is exactly what we're moving forward to is everyone understanding their rules. You know, is I go back to the sports analogy again, you need all the different players. If you've just got a load of pro Madonna strikers that want to score, <coughs> you cannot win the match. You need the defenders. You need a goalie that's going to stand there and do their job that all vital you need a physio you need a, a bus driver you need a coach you need everyone and um, without any of those the whole thing falls down and i'm so with you bryce and steph you know i really do appreciate this i'm loving the learning process making a lot of mistakes along the way learning a lot 
laughing a lot more than I ever used to at myself a couple of years ago. Um, I'd be quite shocked if my mother was watching my YouTube. <laughs> I hope my mom isn't watching. Let's be honest. Some of the topics we get into, I really hope she's not watching. I have a really, really long name for my channel so no one in my family finds me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that was a big mistake for mine. I know my sisters have a really good giggle about me, but they always have, so that's okay. Um, but, you know, I think the thing is, just remembering we're so, so close, guys. Um, let's all do everything we can to bring this forward because... We're nearly there. On the stair. Yes. yes. Oh, well, thank you for watching that. That was our sort of getting it all off our chest little coffee chat. <laughs> We're going to be, um, Bryce and I are going to be back on Saturday with Ishmael Perez, aren't we? Steph, how long are you staying with, with Bryce for? Do you know yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I was actually supposed cool. to leave today and... I decided to stay probably uh, a few more days. So, oh, that's so um, lovely. Probably uh, the weekend, or so. I do have to head home at some point because my fur babies are probably missing me. Um, if I didn't have them, I probably would figure out how, when I'm moving here and and all that kind of nonsense. Because <laughs> I love it down here. I really do. It's it's so much better than up north where I am. But I got to go home and <clears throat> take care of the the pups. Get your babies back. Know, yeah, yeah, and I miss them. Okay, look at mine too. They're just such loyal listeners. I've obviously bored them a lot today because they're always <laughs> falling asleep. And They've Robbie, had a lovely thing. Oh, they're so Robbie cute. Just like my dog Abby. So yeah. They're they're very like. If I didn't know any better, I would think they were the same exact dog. Literally, Robbie is loving this. He's loving yeah. having a house full of friends. He's, he loves he loves when I massage his butt. Yeah. Oh no. If you if he gives loves you, the butt massage, and I'm sure he'll give Catherine his butt because he always cleans his wiener with Catherine talks screen. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sure the butt will be the first thing he shows Catherine. He just he always the ladies. He gives the ladies his butt He's to rub. So soft, everyone. He's just so. Oh my god, I'm in love with Robbie. I really love him. He's such a good dog. I I want to like bring Abby and like Robbie together and see how they are together mm -hmm. because they are so alike. They even talk, they yell. It's so funny. Yep. <laughs> so funny. He's a talker like a pull up. <laughs> We're so, yeah. so lucky having animals in our lives, aren't we? We are so yeah. lucky. And I don't know what I would do without my animals, really. They're, they're really like, they hold the line for me. They absorb, you know, if I'm having a bad day, it's like, you know, they absorb that for you. They, they assist you and help you out. So I don't know where I would be without my dogs. No, they're, su they're such a gift. I've, I absolutely love mine, and I, it's nothing more satisfying than, you Aww. know, they've had a really lovely um, walk, and now they're sitting to me rabbiting on. <laughs> so, thanks so much for everyone watching. We've got some good stuff coming up, all of us, and, um, yeah, onwards and upwards, everyone. Absolutely. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye.